Osiris, Osira, Egyptian Lord of the Underworld and Judge of the Dead. Sister, brother, no, husband, husband, brother, yes, husband, brother, which is a jacked up relationship off the top right there, something that boggles the front. But brother, husband to Isis, the Latinized version of Usir, if I believe correctly, we're not used to dabble in such things as mythology, which is the powerful, the mighty. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Trek Cannon. It's so seems like I'm, I'm missing something. I'm, I feel like I'm missing something. I'm missing something. I'm missing something. Yes, that's now it's official. It is official. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Trek Cannon. So today we're going to be talking about season three, episode eight of the Sanctuary. And of course, I took some notes because I think it's a lot of things that I wanted to discuss. So first off the bat, they did a U-turn on a whole Lazarus thing, I think. Um, I'm going to get into that without too many spoilers, probably some spoilers. Again, you guys know how I roll. So, let's see. Um, in this particular episode, we had a few things going on. And when I say a few things, we, it's a few things going on. Now, off the bat, I'm going to say that the episode was okay. Um, it, was, it, was, it was okay. Um, we have to remember that to seek out new life and new civilizations... It's the only is only the stated mission of the Enterprise in the original series. So I guess when I have my issues of them not seeking out new worlds and new civilizations, um, it's because I'd be like, oh man, come on, what's up with the new worlds and the new civilizations? But that's not really their mandate. They have a different mandate. So I guess they're going to handle it a bit differently, but whatever. So Tilly. Tilly is the first officer. She is the acting first officer. Now, let me tell you something. Um, over the last three seasons, you know, it's been a lot. You know, even me, when I when, when Saru offered her that position, I was thinking to myself, Tilly? Like, Tilly? First officer? You know, I was thinking of all the first officers in history, and Tilly does not stack up to those. But if you think about it, um, who else... Uh, would have been an effective first officer. I mean, the only other person would be what Commander Stamets, and he's not really a people person. Plus, you need him to do things like fly the ship and be an engineer. What they should have did was that got that lieutenant um, uh, from the future Star Trek. She would have been awesome. Actually, that would have put the show in a great dynamic to have the uh, lieutenant who was in the prior episode who was uh, sent by the Admiral to watch their ship Making her the first officer, I think, would have been a great, a great way to go. Now, I'm not saying that Tilly isn't fit to be a. I'm saying Tilly isn't fit to be a first officer, and I'm gonna have to say, anybody who outranks Tilly would feel a certain kind of way. And as a person who's prior service, I'm gonna have to say, if a private ended up getting promoted higher than me, and I was a sergeant or something like that, and now they acting sergeant major, no, no, it's gonna. I'm going to have to have a lot of respect for that person. That person will have to know their shizzes is knit. But, so, they talked a little bit about the SB19 data um, as far as it coming from a nebula. Now, I didn't know Saru was able to see as well as hear what it what frequencies, which is a pretty cool trait. But, um, it's boiling down to some kind of distress signal coming from the nebula. A distress signal that would cause, that would be the origin of the burn. What kind of Federation experiment was going on there? Also, the, at the burn, did it affect, okay, who's the other um, uh, civilizations in this track that we know use warp drive? The Dominion use warp drive. Uh, the Romulans, they don't use dilithium. I wonder if the, the Dominion lose, use dilithium crystals. I never really, wow, I should know this. I've never seen them use dilithium. So, but I wonder, I know that the Federation had pri primor, primarily used dilithium crystals, but 
Um, I wonder where, uh, you know, what other civilizations, you know, if you guys know, let's make some comments. So, Empress Giorgio. I'm going to have to say I think Empress Giorgio is a replicant, a replic Giorgio, a replic emperor. All right. Uh, I know of no sign, no uh, Star Trek virus or anything going on that'll make you just decide to start glitching out when you're being scanned. Now, I remember uh, talking about that the guy who was interrogating her from uh, Section 31, he was probably making a recording using those glasses of her uh, personality, of her conscious, making a copy of her conscious. And I think they have the real Empress Giorgio uh, being questioned and being probably tortured and something like that. And he put replicant Giorgio on there to kind of be a spy slash, um, yeah, we don't have, you know, everything's okay with Giorgio thing. But um, it'd be interesting to see where they go with that. So <laughs> I love how the doctor was talking to Empress Giorgio and he was like, you know, you know, there's some things that, you know, first it'd be, uh, slight, you may not even notice, hey, what did I do with my keys? Where did I hide that last body? That was awesome. I just got to get that. That almost made me spit out my Kool-Aid. So they're dealing with uh, the planet Quajon today, which is the home world of book, the empath, who apparently uh, is going to be the new Deanna Troy. I guess he's going to be the new Deanna of the show. I hope that they write him with a little bit more meat than they did Deanna. But Basically, their world is being attacked and ravaged by these locusts that came out the water, out the lakes or the oceans or whatever, and they've been eating up all the food. And everybody is basically having this famine thing. So they got into cahoots with Osira, uh, who is one of the Emerald Chain heads, okay? And I'm going to have to say, when I seen Osira, it's totally, totally fine that an Orion female, actually it's normal that an Orion female would be the head of it, but it's two things that I've been noticing about uh, how they've been doing Orions uh, in Lower Decks and in Discovery. It seems that they don't have those pheromones that make people uh, googly-eyed and basically horny, make you basically horny. You know, they haven't really um, shown that. And this is the first time I've seen a not-so-attractive Orion female. I looked at her, and I was like, ah, something off with her symmetry. But she's not, no, she's not making me, she's not making me feel the hulkness. Anyway, so, um, risking a spore drive. I don't understand why the Admiral hasn't scanned the spore drive and made it standard issue on all the vessels. You could basically do the programmable matter thing and make a whole new spore drive, get some pilots. Stamets could teach them how to fly it. You know, it's, I wonder why they haven't done that. Now, they said that Starfleet has tucked tail or became like the boogeyman. You know, like, I wonder what went on after the burn or during the time after. What, what happened to Starfleet to make them seem so... Um, uh, feared or hated and, uh, you know, such, such a, like such bad people, it seems in this particular Asian time. I wonder what happened, uh, to cause that. Now it's totally possible that Starfleet went off the rails. They started to do it several times. Uh, they started to do it when, uh, they thought the dominion was going to attack earth and they tried to declare martial law. Uh, they've tried to do it when the claim, it was doing the Kittermer, uh, accords. So, it's it's totally possible that Starfleet can go off the rails, you know. So I wonder exactly what happened. You know, um those teleporters, those little badge site to site teleporters, unless I'm missing something, has anybody noticed nobody put coordinates of where they want to go in these things? They just kind of tap them and magically appear where they want to appear. Is that normal? I mean, according to Star Trek history, you gotta at least put some coordinates of where you want to go. You need to put some coordinates in where you want to go. And what kind of power source do they have in these things to whereas it can do that? Like, that's awesome. Like, that's some high-speed technology. And I'm surprised that I see none of the uh, holograms walking around with mobile emitters. Is that weird, too? Like, anyway. So, transworms. Every time I see a transworm, the first thing I think about is the pilot's from uh, Dune, 
the, t the time space pilots, man, after they take so much spice, they turn into these weird looking worm things, man, navigators. And by the way, that's coming out on the 25th on HBO Max. And I I got HBO Max specifically for that movie and like three or four other movies. And no, I am not promoting HBO Max. They're not sponsoring this video, but I can't see those videos. That, so there you go. There you go. But anyway, they remind me, you know, like they should be on the rackets eating up some people or something like that. But uh, Linus, Linus, although you didn't see him in the episode because he was, uh, they made him, they restricted him to his quarters because he was shedding. That dude is always the comic relief, you know? Uh, and that's kind of bogus to bring some kid to, you, you know, my door to, Psh, hey, man, let me peel your face. No, 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 kid, get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> but um, so Tilly gave Saru several little lines that he could say, you know, to be his little catchphrase. Execute, hit it, and manifest hilarious okay how he was trying them and everything that was just hilarious is hit it <laughs> ha, british saru but uh that that was that was funny it was a nice little homage to you know uh make it so and you know stuff like that so this this again this federation of signal man being mixed in with things in this in this uh the ruben nebula I don't know how they're going to make this happen with this, you know, unless it's some kind of weird Federation experiment. Okay, so let's talk about uh, Nadira. Now, Nadira operates like no other trill that I have ever seen in Star Trek canon. First of all, they didn't really have to throw that um, I like to be referred to as them and we, us, okay? Never has anybody called Dax, you know, uh, that. So I'm going to continue this on in the second video, but um, stay tuned. And for part two, we should be coming right up next. Remember to click and subscribe if you haven't. All right, part two coming up.